Welcome to the Fall Estate. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all for being with me. Uh, you can support the Fall Estate by going to thefallestate.tv slash donate. And don't forget that the Fall Estate is also on locals.com. So click the link in the description to support our work. And thank you in advance. I have with me Lauren Near. She is an advocate for gender equality and career progression with STEM Industries. And she is the author of the number one best-selling book, Value at Work, Shining a Light on Bias, Enga Bias to Engage, Enable, and Retain Women in STEM. That's a lot, Lauren. <laughs> it is. Welcome to thank the show. Thank you for show. having me here. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Um, can you tell me what is STEM exactly, STEM, what is that? So STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Oh, okay. And so I read that at the age of 18, according to your bio, you were named one of the UK top female computer, computer students at the age of 18. And how did you do so well in math since women are not normally interested in math and stuff like that, science? So I always liked maths when I was little. I remember my mum bought this audio cassette for the times tables and used to play it in the car. And I used to sing along to it like a song. <laughs> and so I, I was just always very good at maths at school. Uh, when I got to about 12 or 13, then I could study computing studies and I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed coding. Um, we even got a, an opportunity to program microcontroller chips so you could build these little, almost like little Lego robots, um, that if it hit something on the left, it would turn right and so on. And I just really enjoyed all of that. I didn't think it was weird because, yeah. you know, I just thought it's something I like. Um, same uh -huh. as some people like art, some people like sports. I, I just like maths. <laughs> so did you have a, like a brother or brothers or were your father into that? So my, my father is an engineer. Uh, he uh, worked in the energy sector. He became a diver and then he, um, yeah, he, he went really from the ground up, literally offshore. Um, I've got a younger brother and an older sister. My older sister, she does not like maths, was never her thing. Um, she does marketing and communications. Whereas my brother, he's two years younger than me. He, he's a chartered mechanical engineer. So he, he obviously went down the engineering route as well. Nice. And so are you interested in girly things? <laughs> I think I always wonder what girly things are. I mean, I always kind of use this as an example of how my sister and I are very different. Right. That she, you know, paints her nails every week. Um, she's got a ton of different nail varnishes and so on. I think I have two, maybe three. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really something that I do a lot of. Right. But then equally in the workplace, I had a lady call me. This must have been about, I don't know, five or six years ago. And she said to me, I want to understand how can you, you know, be listened to and heard and manage suppliers when you dress quite girly, like you wear makeup and you wear skirts. And I was very confused by the comment because I thought, why does makeup and skirts make you not able to do your job? Right. I don't understand that. <laughs> Amazing. And so on your job, do you tell men what to do? I don't think I tell them what to do as such. It's more that uh, we, as a team, will have a goal. And we say, okay, this is what we need to do. And then I'll say to each of the team members, what do we need to do in order to get there? And then they will say, okay, well, I need to do this and I need to do that. And I go, Fantastic. Oh, Let's no. get after it. And if there's any issues, come and let me know. Are there other women that work on your job in your department or anywhere around you that you can hang out with at lunchtime and things like that? Um, I mean, over, I mean, I've been in the industry for 18 years. It's, it's been different. I think it really just depends. There's, of course, there's more men than women. Right. And in the last few years, I've, 
definitely started building my network of more, I'm going to say women like me, and they're not necessarily engineers. They could be in tech, they could be in, but other, you know, STEM industries. And I find, I started finding that we had a lot in common, even though we worked for different companies, different sectors, but very similar experiences in the workplace. So really great people to just, you know, talk to and say, how was your day? And they can tell you honestly what was happening with them, and then you can share your perspective and so on. Amazing. So like during lunch, lunch time at work before you got other women involved, were you hanging out with the guys in the locker room and the, the, the lunch area, and the guys were talking guy talk? You know, when women are not around, the guys can just say anything, whatever they want. They freely be themselves. And so were you hanging around with guys that would just be themselves even though you were there? When I was at school and university, definitely would have experienced that. <laughs> when I got into the workplace, I noticed not so much in the office. When you're on site, sometimes, you know, they're a little more relaxed there. Uh, so, you know, you will overhear things that you just have to either just ignore completely. Right. Uh, sometimes, you know, if a comment did come up, I could like put my head over the monitor and say, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> and because when I do it, I do it with a smile. So it's not like I'm having, because you want people to be themselves at work. Right. And you want people yeah. to feel comfortable and not that there's a, you know, a policeman watching them. Right. But at the same time, every now and then I'd be like, yeah, just remember I'm still sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> So um, let's say guys were talking in the office and one of the guys went out on a brand new date the night before and he was telling the other guys, man, I went out with this slut last night and that slut was amazing. Would you get mad at him calling a woman a slut? I have, so I think first off, I've never encountered that in the office. Normally, that's a normal it's, talk when women not around. <laughs> yeah. um, I can only imagine <laughs> if someone's if I heard someone say that even when you said it just now I thought I don't like that I, I don't I don't like the language but equally I also then put it down to bias as well because it's like well how, do, how does he know how long has he known this woman is this you know is that just his perspective is he even telling the truth and all these thoughts wow. just go through my mind immediately wow. and I think <laughs> you're, you're just saying a name straight, calling her a word straight away, and you have no idea if that's real or not. That's amazing. It's amazing <laughs> that you would do all that thinking about it, and it was about some other person that had nothing to do with you. Whereas the guys, when they hear, they high five the guy, they laugh about it, and they don't think about it all that way. But the women put a lot of thinking into it thought into it. And why is that? I think it's because a lot of the time, I mean, I, okay, so I'll speak from my own experience, yeah. that um, I tend to observe a lot. I think people, human behavior fascinates me. Yeah. Uh, watching how people interact in teams, you can tell who's the jock, who's the nerd, who's, you know, more introverted, more extroverted, and so on. Um, well, I'd say one of my superpowers is looking around a room and seeing, you know, who is the person that wants to speak but can't get their voice in there. And I've noticed a, in a lot of cases that men will speak more than women. And so I, I, I watch that. And I think maybe because of doing more listening – that you start seeing things and you can see where someone says something and then two minutes later they backtrack and they change and talk and say it's something else. And I think maybe it's just all those observations. Um, but also, I guess, women women get called a lot of things at work um, to their faces as well as behind their backs. And I think because just knowing that, you know that, someone has called them a name just because they were angry at them or frustrated by something they did. But I think there's a difference between what someone's done and who someone is. And sometimes I think that gets lost when people are talking about others. Men 
don't care about the name calling like that. They don't put much into it at all. Because if, so, if one guy say, oh, I went out on a date last night, I slept with this slut. And the man would laugh and say, oh, you little slut maker. They would just laugh about it. They don't feel offended. But you feel and other women feel offended when they hear man talk, right? When it's the language you're, you've just used, uh, it didn't make me feel very comfortable. Really? And why, since it had nothing to do with you, why did you feel uncomfortable with the language that I use? I just, I don't know if it was how I was brought up. Um, I mean, generally, I don't swear a lot. Um, <laughs> when I've been in the workplace and that. Yes, I, I mean, I know all of these words. I've heard them before. Right. But I think it really depends on the context of the situation. And I just, I end up thinking, to your example that you've just used, that that then brings a woman's reputation into account. And reputations can be, you know, take years to build and then be gone in a second. And that could have just be because of a careless remark. And that may be carried forward. I think that's why it makes me uncomfortable because I wonder that. Now, I wonder in the same vein, do the men think about it like five minutes later or an hour or a day later if they, if they encountered this woman? Will they remember that conversation? I don't know. I would hope not that, you know, the, the woman would get a blank sheet of paper to be able to introduce herself properly. But you never know. Right. They probably would think, wow, she's fine. I would like to get with her. But they wouldn't, it would be negative. You know what I mean? It would just be manly. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the problems when you bring women into the workplace. Uh, places with men because when it's just men, men are being themselves. And then when you bring the woman in because she's so sensitive and emotional, she would cry, oh, this is um, sexual harassment. This is uh, verbal abuse. She would give it a name when the guy didn't mean anything about it, when it's just guys. And then next thing you know, a lawsuit is on, the woman tried to get the man fired. It just created a problem because she is now working with men and she's so sensitive and that doesn't, that doesn't go to gel, together very well. And that's another reason that women should not be allowed to work with men except in the front office or something, you know? <laughs> I mean, of course, I've got a different perspective. What's your perspective for, on it? For, for me, it's all about <laughs> intent. Like, if someone's let's just say a computer stops working and people are swearing and, you know, someone's swearing about it. And this could be male or female right. because they're trying to, I don't know, send a document to a printer and the printer just refuses to work. These types of things annoy people and they can be angry about it. I don't think that would bother me because I'd know that that person's, you know, mad at their computer or, or whatever. I think the intent is... So back back to your example, if a guy is talking about a woman in those terms, I would say, what is the intent he is trying to get here? Is he trying to get a high five from these guys around him? Yeah. So what does that say about him? But Why does he need that high five? Because when a man, a man score, quote unquote, like that, it's like bragging rights. But why? why? Why does a guy feel the need to do that? It's fun. I mean, they, they should have their own self-esteem and know that, hey, it doesn't matter if you get these high fives from the guys or not. You should feel good about yourself. Well, it just, it's fun. It's, it's uh, conquering. It's ego. It's just part of a man thing to do. It's not <laughs> personal. Yeah. And I think that's that's the thing. When I hear... I'm just trying to think of some example of like another t similar example right. because I know that you you want people to feel themselves at work. Right. Uh, as I talked earlier, that if I speak to a colleague and so on, um, I I love to ask them about their families, their hobbies. Did they watch the football at the weekend? That kind of thing because it's work and life are so intertwined these days, especially when sometimes you're speaking to people in their homes. Um, I've been on calls and a dog has just jumped up on top of me and I've just been like, okay, 
because she was a she's a puppy, <laughs> so I had to put her down. And you know, I looked at everybody else on the Zoom, and they all were smiling because right. they know this is life. This is just what happens. Amazing. I for me, I think it's that fine line that you know if you go and see if you went to see your grandparents for example i'm i mean i can't speak for everybody but i wouldn't be swearing in front of my grandparents right so there's that layer of you know etiquette and i think the the same applies to the workplace i've seen it very different when you're in like the office the corporate office compared to being on site where you're in your overalls and your hard hat and your steel toe caps and so on but it's still, like I say, there, there's this certain element of just respecting your fellow humans around you. That's amazing. You are an advocate for gender equality. Um, what is the difference between equality, equity, and equality? So I I would tend to say equity rather rather than equality. Okay. Because for me, different people require different things. There's a really great cartoon where you see three people of different heights trying to look over a fence. And the really short guy gets the same size stool as the really tall guy and still can't see over it. Whereas equity would give the individual what they need in order to succeed. So, for example, someone really short needs a taller stool, whereas someone really tall maybe needs a shorter one. And that that's equity. Yes. And, so it's and, um, like they say, for example, uh, if you went to uh, give a bunch of kids a written test and one of the kids was blind, then you would give them a Braille test, right. uh, a test that's in Braille so that they can do the test the same as everybody else, but they just have different accommodations that need to be made. And what is equality? Equality would be giving the same to everyone. So in, in that case, giving the same, giving the, the blind child uh, a piece of paper that wasn't in Braille, so they wouldn't be able to read what it said. Oh, I see. And, and then that puts them at a disadvantage, even though they could be just as bright as all the other children, but it needs to be there, there needs to be an accommodation where they get the same test, but it's in Braille for them. Amazing. Um, are you a feminist? It all depends on your definition of feminism, because I hear extremes on it. Um, I do think that a woman can study maths and a man can study maths. I, I think that's fine. Um, I don't think a woman should be told she can only, you know, be in the kitchen and, you know, in the home and cook and clean for all her life. I think she is, I think there are many women who are really comfortable and that's their choice that they choose to do that. But there are equally women who choose to go out into the workplace. And I think it's, it's those choices that, you know, what is the harm in it? Amazing. And so you are a feminist? But just a different kind? <laughs> I'll say a certain type of feminist. <laughs> <laughs> and how would you define, what's the definition to your type that you are feminist? So I, I believe that women can do a lot of things in the world. I'm not going to say everything. I can't do everything. Right. Um, do not make me do any sports or anything because I'm not good at that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, well, how but, would you define your definition of the type of feminist you are? Is there, a def is there a meaning to it, a definition? For me, you know, maybe, and again, maybe it's feminism, maybe it isn't. But I, I like to think that as human beings, we can support each other and that re regardless of your gender, you can go into the workplace and you can deliver value for your business and possibly the world. You can you can do things that change the world that way. And I don't think that you should be told you can't just because of your gender. I think that that's the message that I'm at, where I'm at with it. Oh, I see. And if a man was married, a man and a woman married, and they have children together, should the man allow his wife to go out and work or should she make him stay? Should he make her stay home and raise his children while he's away? I 
think it's a because it's a marriage part. Of, you know, that's a that's a commitment they've made to each other, and they've made a commitment to their family. Right. So it's definitely a decision that they should make together. I, I don't think it should be the man's decision or the woman's decision. I think as a family, they would make that decision together. But suppose the woman want to, and the man say, "No, you got to stay home and raise my children." Should she obey him and stay home? Again, I think it's up to them because in in any in any marriage, they'll be give and take. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be, yep, I want to go out with my friends today, so therefore, someone needs to look after the kids. I I think the same. It it would apply in so many different areas. The the key thing about marriage is compromise. But should the woman obey her husband? Should the man obey his wife? No. Why is that? Because every time the man listens to the woman, he suffers. But when the woman listens to the man, she gets better in life. Is that always true? Well, sometimes you have weak men that are afraid of women. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but every, even a, a weak man, but every time a man listens to the woman, he suffers. It's just a, I don't, it's a spiritual I don't know rule. About I don't know about that. I'm yeah. pretty sure there's lots of men in the world who've listened to their mothers oh, and my, have grown into great men. That's why they're <laughs> suffering and listen to mama. <laughs> As a man, you shouldn't even listen to your mama or you will <laughs> suffer. Isn't that true? Oh, you're going to make mamas of the world cry. <laughs> <laughs> Are men and women equal? Oh, I got to go back to the question, though. So. Should the woman obey her husband? If her husband said the building is on fire, you need to leave right now, then yes. <laughs> Should the woman obey her husband, even if it's not an extreme situation? It all depends on the context. It, it would need to be specific examples. Um, the word obey, I think, is quite, um, it, it's got, it's got something behind it. I can't think of the word that I'm, I'm looking for right now, but it's, um, it, it makes you think obey. Does that mean I'm your slave? Yes. And yeah, I don't, I don't think wives are slaves to husbands. Why I don't not? think they should be. That's what they were made for, to be the slave to the, to the husband. She is a slave. That means that, she watches over his children. She keeps the house running as far as paying the bill, buy the groceries, keep it clean, and do what the man said do. Otherwise, the marriage is not going to work. That's true. I mean, if you hear Sheryl Sandberg talk about this, she she talks about how she won't rest until women are running, you know, and being you know, half of the boardrooms, half of the countries in the world, uh, and so on. And in in her book, Lean In, and I, I read her book, she talks about that it's really the compromise at home. So like you say, women shouldn't, you know, in, in my opinion, um, everybody needs their own, their own little part of the world. They need their lives, their friends, their, their, their partnerships, and, and so on. And when you get a man and a woman coming together in a marriage, that, then that's, you know, that's great. They, they're bringing their two lives together. But as always, I mean, if, let's say, if, even if they live in two different places, then there's a compromise. Okay. Are we going to move for, you know, his job or her job? Or, you know, it, there's always going to be a compromise with with the people in the marriage. So I suspect there's going to be obeying on both sides. It all, it all depends on what it is. That's amazing. Um, should a man marry uh, an educated woman? That's up to him. <laughs> but, but does an uh, educated woman make for a good wife or mother? And a mother? I am sure there are brilliant mothers around the world who, for whatever reason, were unable to get an education or couldn't go as far as they wanted to. But yet they can still be great mothers. They, yeah, uh, they could have right. been inherited that from their an mothers. Uneducated and woman, an uneducated woman would be good, a good wife 
and a good mother, but the question is, could a educated and an educated woman be made for a good wife and a good mother? I mean, I would. I, I don't see why not. Because I, I don't think it's their education that makes them a good or a bad wife and mother. Educated women tend not, they tend to want to pretend that they're equal to men. And so in the marriage, they try to turn the man into a woman. Oh, you need to stay home. You need to do, you don't help with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I, hey, I'm, I'm honest. If I get a jar that I can't open, I will call. You know, I will call and ask a guy come and open it for me because right. they have they have a stronger you know muscle strength. And we, um, I'm sure if I liked the gym and I worked out a lot, I could improve myself in that way. But you know, sometimes it's easier to just get it and say to a guy, "Can you open this for me?" <laughs> would you? You're educated. You have a job. Would you? Um, Obey your husband if you are you married? If I may ask, uh, I'm not married. If you are married, and I don't like doing this, I like to happen. But <laughs> if you are married, would you obey your husband? Depends on what you ask me to do. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to ask you to jump off a bridge, but <laughs> <laughs> he's going to ask you to stay home, have his babies, and watch over his children, cook and clean, stay pregnant in, in the kitchen. I don't think he'd be my husband if he did that. Because <laughs> again, I think it's all about compromise and it's all about finding the right person for you. And and I am absolutely sure with the billions of people in the world, there are absolutely women that want that in a husband, that they want to stay home, want to look after the kids. And that for me, as long as it's their choice, I'm 100% behind them. And so are you, do you say yes or no that educated women make for good wives and mothers? Is that a yes or no? I'm going to say, so I, while it, I'm going to say yes, because I don't think that's the bit that defines whether they're a good wife or a mother. Oh, okay. Are men and women equal? Again, it depends on which state. Strength-wise, probably not. <laughs> no. Height-wise, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> How about period? I mean, no, because, okay, so if it was voting for the president, a woman's vote counts as well as a man's vote. So that's, you know, that's equal. If it's down to, you know, running a marathon, a man is probably going to be able to do more than a woman can. A lot of people can do more than me, so that. <laughs> but it it all depends. I I don't think you can say are men and women equal because it all depends. Is there anything that a woman is equal to a man in or with? Is there anything? I mean, it could be it, capabilities, but it depends on what it is. Like, for example. Um, so we, we, I talk about this when two people apply for a job and on paper, if they both have the same degree from the same place, when you're assessing the two, you would tick the box on both of them because they're both educated. They both, and in that case, if they've got the same degree from the same institution, then you can say, yeah, they're equal in that, in that instance. But once they got the job, let's say, the, uh, if the woman got the job over the man, then the owner of the business will have to lower the standards a little bit so that the woman can feel that she fit in, that she's equal to the man, which will weaken the man as well because you got to bring the standard down and pretend that the woman can do it in the same manner that a man can. <laughs> I have not experienced that in the 18 years that I've been working. I bet you have, but they just haven't told you. I mean, hey, I can't say that for sure. If someone hasn't told me that, I don't know that it did or didn't happen. Right. But but I know that um, I don't think there's a perception. What am I going to say here? I don't think they lower the bar when a woman joins a company. I, I'm going to put that out there. I don't think they hire a woman just to... Um, 
you know, I don't think that's going to make a company worse off. I think women bring a number of skills that are traditionally more feminine than the, I'm going to say, traditional alpha male fist on the table, you do what I say, um, that, that used to happen in, in boardrooms and meeting rooms. I think leadership is changing, that it's becoming a lot less autocratic and a lot more uh, of having a lot of voices contribute and say, yep, yeah, this is what we want to do. Because that's, that's what the workers of tomorrow want. They, they want their voices in the room. And you're right. Things are changing as a result of bringing women in, but they're not getting better. They are changing, but not for the best. They're only getting worse. You now have men afraid to be men. They're careful how they act and what they say around the woman. I noticed in the military, now they're just starting to allow women to be in the military. The standards are very low now. And the men have to, within themselves, lower their ability in order to make the woman feel that she's equal to him. The, even the, the, uh, the grime and, and the jumping the wall and fighting one another and knocking each other out and cursing while you're knocking them out. The men have to lower their standards so that the woman can feel she's equal. Otherwise, she's going to say that they are discriminating against her. I don't think anybody should do that, though. No, they do um, it. I mean, I, oh, I, I, I believe you. Um, I've never heard any different, um, So I, and I've got no experience with the military. But I would say, you know, if, if someone wants to be fulfilled in life, they don't want to hold themselves back right. in, in, er in any area. And... I've had lots of lots and lots of experiences where I have been around people who are better than me at something. I mean, one of one of my best friends, uh, she used to play squash for Scotland. Very, very sporty, beat me all the time at any sporting activity. You name it. She's still my best friend because she was good at that, but I was good in other good at other things. And for me, I guarantee everybody is good at something. There, yeah, there's something inside every single person that they are good at. You're right about that. Everyone are good at something. But the difference is when you bring a woman into a man's world, he has to lower his ability so he doesn't fully develop into manhood because he is stifling himself in order to pretend that that woman is coming up to him. He's really gone down to her so. As a, as a result of doing that, he never become his, his full self because he, it's like a man growing tall, but because his sister is mad that he's taller and mama made him stunt his growth so the sister doesn't feel bad. It's like that in the world today. Men are stunting their growth in order to make the woman feel better. Or she's going to cry and call it some form of discrimination or something. Now you got a lawsuit on your hand and the bosses don't want that. I think they've got organizational problens if that's going on. It happens um, all over the place. <laughs> I got to I mean go ahead. Last last year, um no, the last few years, I've done quite a lot of work with agility where the the best practices that I've seen is where everyone gets to do what they are really good at. And then you build the team together, putting all the right skill sets together in order to deliver for the business. And it just energizes everybody because no one's stunting themselves. They're all able to, you know, push themselves. And when you've got a great environment of those people, you can actually learn from each other. So being good at something is, is awesome. But it's even better when you can teach someone else and, you know, get them just as good. Should a woman be allowed to play in men's sports? <laughs> what is a man's sport? Football, basketball, soccer, boxing, I mean, wrestling, you know, coming, coming riding from horses, the UK, riding a know, bull. <laughs> I mean, we all fly the flag for the lionesses who who won um, who won last year. So you, you know they're they're they play football and they're really good at it. What's the uh, that's a girl team? 
Yep, it was a uh, England women's football team. Well, that's all right for the women to play in their own team. Should women be allowed to play in men teams or men teams? I mean, immediately I start thinking about mixed doubles tennis. They have men and women on it. Um, I think it all comes down to what are the rules of the game? And is it fair on both sides? Because if you've got a mixed team on both sides, then why not? So should a woman, should women be allowed to play in men's sports? With other women, yes. By themselves, I'd be like, I don't know if I'd want to join like an American football team being the only woman there. I'd be like, no, thank you. <laughs> right. And so should women be allowed to play in men's sports? They, they, they should be asked. Should they um, be allowed? Allowed. Yes. I don't think it should be a rule that says um, you are allowed or you are not. Why not? I would say, yep, make make them all. Because that, then that's someone else. What I find with a lot of rules, um, and especially, you know, with the world changing as it is, sometimes they can get outdated very quickly. Or they could be written in one way with something in particular intended. And then something else comes up and someone goes, nah, but the rule says this. So it it all depends on the specific circumstance. So you're saying, yes, a woman should be allowed to play a men's sport? With other women, yes. So again, I'm, I'm no, qualifying I'm not talking the statement. About, <laughs> I'm not talking about with other women. Men's sport. Should women be allowed to go come in there and play with the men? If they want to, should, and they have the ability to, should sure. They, should they be allowed? Yes. Yeah, okay. Should men <laughs> be allowed to play in women's sports? Yes. If, if Again, if... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're okay with the transgender men playing in women's sports? I do not have a stake in it. Like I say, I'm not a sports person. Only. Right. I think it all comes down to who they're playing with, your team members. Right. It, any, any, any sport where it's a team, it has to be a team decision. So under women's swim team, it's all women, and now men are starting to want to become a part of it. Should they be allowed to get into that all women swim team? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, I definitely don't talk about any of this in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I know there's a lot in the news about this at the moment. Right. Um, I, I honestly, I would need to educate myself more on it. All, well, I, all I would say it from the perspective of I, I think gender sometimes, if it's used as a barrier, um, can be a problem. It, it all depends. But, you know, if someone, works hard and they train really hard for the sport that they want to play, then, you know, they should have that opportunity to be able to play that sport. Meaning that if men work hard to win, but they can't beat the guys, they should be allowed to play, uh, compete in the women's sport with the women. Since they're not, they work very hard to beat the men, but they couldn't. And so <laughs> then maybe they need to work harder. And, then they, <laughs> and they join the women's team. They beat in everything. You, that should be fine. I, mean, it, I don't I think it. for example, boxing. Boxing has weight classes. You don't put a featherweight in with a heavyweight. Right. And that's not a, That's not a gender thing. That's a category thing. I, I would say that that type of categorization, um, like fencing, it all depends on your reach. You wouldn't put someone, you know, who has a really, you know, young, young, I've seen kids fencing. <laughs> you wouldn't have them playing with an adult because that, that just wouldn't be fair. So you need the evenly matched. Uh, so you're saying, if I'm reading it right, and I'm black and slow, so forgive me. You're saying, yes, women should be allowed in men's sport, but men in women's sport need to be thought about. I would say both sides need to be thought about. Okay. Like I said, if you put me on an American football team, I think I would just get crushed. That's because <laughs> you're a lady. <laughs> and it, honestly, it's probably not something I would like to do. 
But I'm sure there are women in the world who, you know, would, I've decided that because there's, you know, so many billion people in the world, you're probably going to find somebody with every single opinion all, all, right. on the planet. <laughs> Absolutely. You have worked in the past as a gender consultant for businesses. Um, yes. Explain to me what that is. So it's um, it's a gender equity consultant. So what when I work with businesses, I will coach them on how um, e how how much equity they have in how uh, their employees are finding their experiences at work. So for example, are the women finding that they get opportunities for development um, as much as men do? And, and sometimes it's not even gender related. Sometimes it is because someone has a different background or English isn't their first language or they're from another country. I'll, I'll group them all under um, people from underrecognized backgrounds. And I do think that a lot of businesses are still in this transition state where they haven't quite realized that they have a lot of untapped potential within their organizations. And if they tap into that, they'll really be able to boost their profits. Oh, why would a company allow an outsider, someone like you, a consulting person, come in and tell them that don't they have sense enough to know where this employee does this better than this employee or add to it? Why do they need an outsider to come in to tell them how to run their business? I've never seen that before until recently in life. Why do they need an outsider to tell them that? So what, what I've noticed is a lot of employees don't have a great deal of psychological safety at work. And that means things like they feel like if they speak up, it's going to be held against them. If they say something isn't right, it's going to be held against them. I, I've spoken to some of these people who have said, yeah, if you say something that is unpopular, your name is going to be at the top of the redundancy list next time there's a reorganization. So they are afraid to speak up. But when whereas, whereas when an external person comes in and speaks to them, I can gather all this information and put it together to the leadership team and say, this is what's really going on. And you don't name names, you don't tell on people or anything, <laughs> but you give them an indication of this is reality within your organization and this is how people are feeling. But I would never allow a person to come into my company and tell me stuff like that because they are creating a problem for my company, for me and my business. I would never allow an outsider to come in and tell me, Stuff like that. I mean, for me, I would I tell the I speak with these leaders directly. I don't go and advertise it. Um, definitely not publicly, and definitely not to the whole organization. It is a conversation between me and the organizational leader to explain. Look, this, these are the findings. Here are some things that can be done to make it improve. And I'm happy to work with them, facilitate coaching, facilitate workshops on improving it. And most importantly, finding a way to measure the improvement. But that's because the job of the owner of the business to figure out how to make his business work. Why mm -hmm. is the outsider smarter than the owner of the business since he started Nobody. the business? <laughs> Nobody knows everything, though. Um, and why? that's why he knows everything well, about his business. He will, but again, he won't know everything about every single person employed there. I guess it all depends on the size of the business. If they've got 10 people, it's slightly different than if they've got, you know, 10,000 people in the business. Oh, I uh, see. What I've noticed, this seemed to have come about because the blacks and now the so called other people of color have been complaining that. The white people work better than them. They work hard, especially the white man. And they seem to be jealous of the white man climbing the ladder when they're slowly coming up. And so they seem to want people to come in and tell the company what to do so that they can get affirmative action in the business without having to earn it. And that was pretty much about. No. Um, I So again, I have a different perspective on it. Right, I understand. I, I think there's a lot of bias that happens in organizations all over the world. 
I believe that there has been, as we talked a little bit about earlier, there's been this traditional view of leadership where it is the person, you know, standing in front with a big, you know, fist on the table. This is how we do things around here and everybody fall in line. And if you don't do it, you're going to be fired, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, and so it was really it what be. that. <laughs> that's what that, that's you know, the that manly part, what, way, <laughs> not the mama way. But the leadership is changing. I mean, one of the things that's driving it is technology. So we have younger people coming into the organizations that have a lot of tech skills that the older generation just don't have. Not saying that they couldn't go and learn, but it, it's just different because technology has is changing. And there is a generation coming into the workplace where they have grown up with this technology around them. So they are naturally going to be better at certain things than their leaders or perhaps even those running the company, for example. Now, do you expect the person in charge of the company to know everything and have all the skills? That is just unrealistic. Right. So in in this case, it helps for them to have, you know, a confidant that they can speak to to say, okay, what can I do to make this even better? And for me, it's all about um, making sure you don't have square pegs and round holes. <laughs> You've got to make sure people are in positions where they can develop, where they are engaged and they are enabled. And that's people from all backgrounds. I know, you know, I, I know a straight white man, really good friend of mine, and he struggles sometimes in the workplace. So I say all of it applies to everyone. You want everyone to be able to be at their best. When I was growing up and I went out into the work world, it was always the person that did the job better. And I was able to move up in different departments because I didn't have that mindset that you had to be a, a, a certain color and that I was in competition with someone. I just did what I did. I, I worked hard, I showed up, I treated people the way I like to be treated. And I was able to just move about wherever I wanted to. And the world used to operate like that. It was the best qualified person. Now it's not that and things are getting worse. It's like, it's based on the color, it's based on female, not based on transgender and all that mess. It's not the best qualified person. And so services and businesses are horrible today because we don't have the best qualified people. We have the people based on what color they are, how they feel, how they look. And most of these people don't know how to do anything. They're lazy. They have not been taught by their parents to work hard. They have no respect for another person's business. And so things have only gotten worse rather than better as a result of degrading another man's business. I, the, the way you described when you started and, you know, the best person for the job. Right. That, that I absolutely subscribe to that. Um, that's what Lauren thinks the world should be. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What, where, where I see it is I have, I, I met a woman a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago now, and she was a mechanical engineer working as a secretary. And I said, why, why are you a secretary? And she said, because that was the only role that was offered to her. Um, and she was unable to do anything else because of the countries she was working in, the cult, the workplace culture she was in and so on. But, but she said she enjoyed her, she enjoyed her job. Right. But it did open my eyes to it. I thought, but you, there are potentially many, many competent people who have so much more to give than they can because of workplace cultures or bias or any any number of things that are just getting in the way. And, and like you said, I I strive to you know spread the message that people should be able to show the world you know what they've got to offer and be given that opportunity to do that. Do you agree that women do make better secretaries than men do, right? <laughs> I know a man who's a secretary who's very, very good at his job. Is he a beta? 
Sorry? Is he a beta male? He's weak. I mean, I, I don't know him personally. Like oh. I said, I've spoken to him. He, whenever he organizes things, it's organized really well. Never had a problem with, you know, time, you know, meeting rooms booked. He, you know, he does what it says on the tin. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this about the survey, and then I want you to tell us some about your book because it's interesting. Uh, according to a 2017 mental health report of British women, it says today's women are three times more likely than men to experience mental health problems. The rate of stem, uh, the rate of self harm among women, are triple since nineteen have tripled since nineteen ninety three. Women are more than three times as likely to experience eating disorder than men. Young women are three times more likely than young men to experience PD. PTSD. Young women are more likely to experience anxiety-related condition uh, than any other group. Is that because women are so emotional? I don't think it's because of women. I'm, in fact, I'd be really interested to know about that survey post-COVID, <laughs> uh, because COVID's obviously turned the world upside down. And there's a lot more anxiety uh, in, in the world in general than there was previously. Why would it be saying more women than men? I think because sure. women are I've... more emotional than men. I know they're teaching men to be emotional now, like a woman. <laughs> but women Emotionally tend... intelligent, maybe. <laughs> I'm sorry? Emotionally intelligent. I think men, still, men have always had emotions. It just depends what they do with them. Well, they haven't always had it. I'm sure to it, some form or another. But when I was growing up, men were not emotional. They didn't tell women their issues. They were like, oh, you hurt my feelings. Oh, that, <laughs> that, this and that. But women, women have convinced men to be like that. And so you're seeing more, especially millennials, you're seeing more and more men becoming like a woman, emotional and all that mess. But normally they're not like that. I think, you know, they always say a problem shared is a problem halved. I don't think that just applies to women. But men shouldn't <laughs> be sharing their problem with women or period. I, I don't know. I always, I mean, again, I'm not a guy, so I don't know. But yeah. I always thought men do share. But maybe it's just in a masculine way. Maybe they do it while playing PlayStation or something. I don't know. Yeah, they may share it with another man, but they should never share it with a woman because a woman cannot, you heard the survey, a woman can, can't even have her own emotional problems. You need the man to help her. And so by a man telling his wife or his mother or his girlfriend or any other woman, his problem is like dumping on her. She's going to trip out because she can't handle it. <laughs> Have you ever seen heard that phrase? I think it was a meme or something I re uh, read years ago, where they said men are stupid and uh, women are crazy. I said, but women are crazy because men are stupid. <laughs> and it's, it's always that men are from Mars, women are from Venus. It it's an easy one to always kind of pit men and women against each other. But, 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 but honestly, right. what I'm advocating for is that everybody is stronger together. And you're <laughs> right in that women do go crazy when men are not strong, <laughs> because the woman needs the man to be strong, so when he's not strong, she go nuts. She hates him when he's weak. I think we've seen cases where men are just as crazy, um, and sometimes it's a woman that brings the, you know, the sensible way to things. I mean, stereotypical mothers would come in and just be like, what's all going on here, and just calm the family down. But then equally, you'll get... I, like I say, it's different strokes for different folks. I There's, agree with you. There are yeah. emotional men, but they're just like their mama. They need to overcome their mothers. It's not normal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right? I think it all depends on... Like, everyone is a product of their experiences to date. So it all depends on what they've experienced in their lives. Amazing. I got to ask you this real fast because of time. I noticed that when women are allowed to work in men jobs, doing manly stuff. The first thing they want to do is organize and corrupt the business by bringing other women into it. It's like they want to go around the world and say, oh, come on, be this and be that. 
They want to corrupt that manly business by bringing in other women, when men tend not to do that. If they got a great job, they may tell a friend, they may tell a brother or something, hey, this is a great job, they have an opening. But women go out and organize other women to bring them in to corrupt the business. Why is that? (laughs) I don't think I'd use the word corrupt. There was a McKinsey study done a few years ago where they said diverse teams actually lead to greater profits. So if a business actually wants to be as profitable as they can be, they need diverse teams. And that diversity comes from individuals with different backgrounds. It could be gender. It could be what language they speak. Uh, it, ultimately, for me, it all comes down to the skill set. And there will be more traditionally masculine skills that that men may have. And there may be more traditionally feminine skills like, you know, being able to listen, um, reading the room, reading See, I don't what's like going that. on with people. A man ain't got time to sit around and be listening at work. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, again, that's why we're stronger together, because men can do the you know, the the skills and the tasks that they are more suited to and women can do the ones that they're more suited to. And then together, that's a really great company because you're tapping into everybody's strengths. If that's true, why are things getting worse in these companies as opposed to when they were just men doing it for the most part? Work, the workplace was amazing. You got things done. Services were excellent. The quality of the car or whatever they were building was amazing. Why did its services get worse when they brought all these ideas into it as opposed to when it was just men? It was getting better. <laughs> it was better. It was getting better until they start bringing in all these other not so nice it, ideas. It reminds me of that Baz Luhrmann song, the sunscreen one, where they said, you know, as you get older, you look to the past and it was always better in the past. They said, you know, it, it talks about prices were reasonable and politicians were honest and all that. But that's and, true. <laughs> and I think that happens as we all get older. It, like, I remember when I used to go to the cinema when I was younger, it used to be so, it used to be a whole lot cheaper than it is now. And it is crazy. So I wonder if everybody always looks to the past and go, it was always better then. Let me ask you this then, if that's not true. When you were growing up, were people shooting and killing one another in the movie theater? No. When you were growing up, it was cheaper to go to a movie. You were able to get a nice movie, popcorn, a pop, and a box of peanuts, right? Yep, definitely. (laughs) So wasn't that better? (laughs) It was. And when you were growing up, so nowadays it's not like that. Which would you prefer, nowadays or the way it was when things were good? Yeah. I mean, hey, like I said, if I went to go to the movie theater, I would love to go back in time and (laughs) have those prices. Absolutely. I wonder if the kids of today in, you know, 20, 30 years time, they will look back and say, oh, I wish it was like it was in 2023. They um, probably we will no because idea. Maybe, maybe they will. <laughs> they will because things are only going to get worse the way it's going. So, yeah, they'd be like, wow, I thought it was bad back in those days, but it's even worse today. Um, yeah. I mean, when you come into it, if, if this is all you've known, you don't know any better. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's why I try to tell people about the good old days. Were you, when you were growing up, were you closer to your father or your mother? Both. Um, my dad was away quite a lot until I was about eight years old. He used to work offshore. Oh, okay. But when he'd be onshore, the, I remember he bought me my first Lego Technic, JCB, and we built it together. And that was the first time he said to me, you're my little engineer. Nice. Uh, I remember that. Um, that was my seventh birth- sixth or seventh birthday. So you were closest to him than your mother? But I mean, it both. It all depended on what I wanted to speak about. If it was about my maths homework, I would go to my dad. <laughs> if it was about, you know, friends at school, probably my mom. Um, do you have anger? Everybody's got anger. You about, try to keep it in check. <laughs> how about you? Do you have anger? I'm I'm not an angry person. Do you have anger? I think it'd be strange to say no, but I feel like no. I'm more leaning towards no than yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you never get angry. 
I, like I say, I think everybody gets angry. I get frustrated when my laptop doesn't work properly. <laughs> <laughs> so do you get angry sometimes? Yeah, I get angry sometimes. Amazing. So I got to put you on the hot seat and I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Okay. The hot seat. What is love? Love is beautiful. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? I have never lived in America, so I don't know. <laughs> True or false, abortion is worse than slavery. Say that again? True or false, abortion is worse than slavery. False. Have you ever been, have you ever seen a ghost? No. Is it better to be raised by a single mother or a single father? Both. No. I, I don't think one's better. Than, I mean, ideally, you, you want both parents. <laughs> right. I know the idea, but is it better to be raised by a single mother or a single father? I can't answer that. I don't, I don't know. I've never experienced it. <laughs> is the earth flat or round? It's round. Does a chicken have lips? I don't know. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> uh, do you love white people? I love good people. Do you love white people? Sure. There are white people that I love. Do you love white people? Yes. Should a man ever sit in a passenger seat while a woman is driving? Yes, if uh, he can't drive, and she has a license, and absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we give black Americans reparations? What is reparations? You know how the blacks are begging and complaining that they can't make it because of the white man, and they need reparations? They want okay, to get in I'm there. They want to get in without earning it. They want it based on their color. Entitlement? I'm, I'm not a fan of entitlement, and that applies to anybody. True. Are you black? No, um, my mom's from Trinidad, and my dad's from London, so I'm half West Indian, half white. Half. So for a person like me that's black and slow, it's not a, you're not a, your parent, neither one of your parents were black. No. Oh, ni nice. <laughs> no, I'll okay. play. I'll play. <laughs> True or false? Sending your kids to a public school is child abuse. False. <laughs> is it ever okay to call a woman fat? No, it's not. <laughs> Did you have fun? I did. Nice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Tell the folks about your book, the title of it, and why people should get it. So the book is called Valued at Work, Shining a Light on Bias to Engage, Enable, and Retain Women in STEM. It is shining a light on real life experiences that women and other people from underrepresented backgrounds are experiencing in their workplaces. And if you are a man, it gives you lots of tips on what you can do in the organization. If you are a woman, I really hope that it really tells you that you are not alone, that there are other people that feel the same as you do. And together, men and women and, you know, these organizations, we can make it better for everyone. Nice. And how can people get the book or your website or whatever you want to give out there? Yep. Um, you can buy the book on Amazon. Uh, that's the one I'm most easy to point to people to. Uh, and I love connecting with people on LinkedIn. You you, you can find me there, uh, Lauren Neal, N-E-A-L. And send me a message. We can chat. I'm happy to. A short answer. Why are women so weak that they always need somebody to represent them? <laughs> I mean, I'm here representing myself, and I'm a woman. Right, but why can't they all do that? Why do they need you or someone... Why are they so weak? It's like the blacks. The blacks all we need is somebody to represent them, right? And due to a weakness in them, why are women so weak that they need anybody to represent them? 
I think it all comes down to the time they have available. For me, I got to the point where I thought I am going to use my voice and do something here. Um, I didn't actually think about what anybody else was doing. I thought, well, this is what I want to do. Right on. That makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. I totally enjoyed uh, talking to you. And remember, folks, you can support The Father State by going to thefatherstate.tv slash donate. And we're also on Locos, The Father State on Locos.com. So click the link in the description to support our work. And don't forget to like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe, tell everybody about it. And, and I appreciate it. And if you have guest suggestions for The Father State, contact producer at fatherstate.tv. And we'll get them on. Thank you, Lauren. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it.